Good morning, good morning, good morning. Welcome to Sound the Alarm Ministries Presents. Now a word from our sponsor, uh, live podcast via Spreaker.com and uh, Facebook Go Live video. Of course, I'm Minister Arthur L. Weathersby from Sound the Alarm Ministries. I'm one half of that, as you know. Uh, the other half is my wife, Pastor Evangelist Share. Oh, Weathersby, amen. Sound the Alarm Ministries. The scripture for the ministry is Joel 2.1. And our motto is, we are crying loud and sparing not. Amen. We greet you in the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, on this here wonderful winning Wednesday, as we call it on the sacrificial praise line. Amen. Uh, This is a great day because this is the day that the Lord has made. And we are rejoicing and being glad therein. We thank God for another opportunity that he's given unto us to come in uh, and to minister the, the gospel, the good news to the people. Amen. And. We're not going to dilly-dally. We're going to get right into that because we got a lot of things that we have on our agenda today. Amen. Most gracious and eternal Father, Lord God, I come to this hour just to say thank you. Thank you, Father God, for watching over and protecting, keeping us throughout the night. Thank you for allowing us to wake, to see the dawn of yet another day. Father God, you watched over and kept us. No harm or danger befell us because of your angels of protection that were encamped round about us. And for that, we say thank you. You woke us up this morning to brand new mercies. And this is a day that the Lord has made and we shall rejoice and be glad therein. Father God, I just ask that you forgive us of any and all sins from the previous day up until now. Anything that we've done where we knew about it, didn't know about it, thought, word, or deed, it was not pleasing within your sight. Therefore, we must ask for forgiveness. Now, God, as we go forth throughout our day, let us be mindful that we are created to give you glory and the honor and the praise. So whatever we do, Father God, order our steps in your word as we allow your word to be a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. Create within us a clean heart and renew a right standing spirit within us. Let this mind be in us that is also in Christ Jesus. We want a mind to work according to thy good will and thy good pleasure. And we'll be ever mindful to give you the honor, the praise, and the glory. Now, Father God, I ask that you grant me a fresh anointing of the Deuteronomy's power of the Holy Spirit so that I can do all those things that you have assigned to my hands on this day. Anoint me from the crown of my head to the bottom of my feet, filling me with the precious Holy Ghost so that I can go forth, Father God, uh, uh, with the assignment that you've given unto me, Father God, uh, bringing you glory, honor, and praise. This is going to be a humble prayer I'm going to submit to you at this time. In the precious name of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, I pray and with thanksgiving in my heart. Amen, amen, amen. Uh, good morning, praise God. Good morning, uh, uh, Sister Janine Bell Rezado. Amen. We're going to go right into the scripture. Amen. We're going to go to John, the 15th chapter. Amen. John the 15th chapter, we're going to just do two verses there. Then we're going to flip over to Romans the 8th chapter uh, from verses 35 to 39. And it's going to be in the Amplified Bible. It reads this way. This is my commandment that you love one another just as I have loved you. Uh, ver- that's verse 12, not verse 17. This is what I command you, that you love one another. Amen. Now let's go to Romans the 8th chapter, the 35th through the 39th verses. What shall ever separate us from Christ's love? Shall suffering and affliction and tribulations or calamity and distress or persecution or hunger or destitution or peril or sword? Even as it is written, for thy sake we are put to death all the day long. We are regarded count and counted as sheep for the slaughter. Yet amid all these things we are more than conquerors and gain a surpassing victory through him who loved us. Uh, For I am persuaded beyond doubt, am sure that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor things impending and threatening, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor death, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Thus is the reading of God's word. The word of the Lord is already blessed. May he continue to bless the hearing, reading, doing of his holy blessed word. For we need not just be only hearers of it, but we need and must become doers of it as well. Gracious and eternal Father, at this time I come before you just to say thank you. 
Thank you, Father God, for the reading of your word. For your word is truly a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. Father God, continue to order our steps in your word because the Bible says that the steps of a good man, and I'm going to include woman, our one man, are, are, are ordered by the Lord and you delight in their ways. Amen. Father God, we want to trust in you with all our heart and lean not to our own understanding. In all our ways, we want to acknowledge you so that you can direct our path. Amen. Now, dear God, I pray. As we prepare to go forth into your message that you have for us on this day, Arthur, you must, and I know I must, decrease. Therefore, the Lord my God, he must increase. So I am extremely mindful to say, let the words of my mouth, the meditation of my heart, be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, my strength and redeemer, in the precious name of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, I pray with thanksgiving in my heart. Amen, amen, amen. Well, we're praying and thanking God for everything that he's doing thus far on this day, amen, uh, and the day is yet unfolding, so he yet still has work uh, to accomplish through us, amen. Now, now we're going to have a thought today, and this thought is going to be, uh, well, it's going to be something that, um, that we've talked about before, but God has given me a sense of urgency once again to bring it back up again, but it's a different, it's a different message. But it's the same, it's a different message, but it's still the same message. Oh, yeah, I know what you're saying, but let's get it straight. Okay, Arthur, what is the theme, what is the message for today? Love will keep us together. Love will keep us together. Amen. Amen. Yeah, love will keep us together. And what we want to talk about is, is what is the us and what is, and why will love keep us together? Well, I'm going to talk to you about something that is near and dear to my heart. I have a ministry that God has given me for more than 18 years going on. Um, well, no, not more than 18 years. Lord have mercy. Uh, yeah, it is more than 18 years. More than 18 years and going 18 and a half years, amen. Uh, two, year, two years after I got saved, amen, God gave me the ministry that dealt with family. And I have been, um, from that point on, operating within that ministry. Amen. I, I actually preach. I teach about it. I absolutely teach about it. And as the Lord has blessed me, I have counseled. I have counseled many people about this. And I have been fortunate enough to uh, uh, write a book uh, dealing with the family relationship, which is titled, Check the DNA, What Happened to We Are Family. Amen. And as many of you know, I did that through the publisher, uh, Christian Self Publishing, known as Zulon Press. That's where that book is available, along with uh, the other book on relationship building, Unless God Builds the House. Amen. But we're talking about the family. Amen. And why it's so significant. Uh, the reason why God has placed this upon me to uh, uh, once again uh, try to get uh, uh, illustrate to us the significance of family and the importance of it because what we need to understand is the relationship that God desires between us and him. Amen. And if we understand that relationship... It shouldn't be very difficult to understand the relationship that he desires between one another. And matter of fact, the one that he created uh, uh, with us. So we're going to go right into the scripture. Amen. As the Holy Ghost is leading. As you know, I don't write out no, I don't write out a script. That ain't how God functions with me. Uh, that may be how any, somebody else does it, but that's not how he does Arthur. Amen. I just follow his lead and his guide. We're going to Genesis, the second chapter, and we're in the 18th verse, and it says this. Now the Lord God said, and this is all from the Amplified Bible, y'all, so don't, uh, it would be all of my readings come from the Amplified Bible this day. Now the Lord God said, this is not good, sufficient, satisfactory that the man should be alone. I will make him a helper me, suitable, adapted, complimentary for him. That's what God decided. That's what God said he was going to do. So then he went on to illustrate, and out of the ground the Lord God formed every wild beast and living creature of the field and every bird of the air and brought them to Adam to see what he would call them. And whatever Adam called every living creature, that was its name. And Adam gave names to all the livestock and to the birds of the air and to every wild beast of the field. But for Adam, there was not found a helper meat, suitable, adapted, complimentary for him. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and while he slept, he took one of his ribs or a part of his side and closed up the place with flesh. And the rib or part of his side which the Lord God had taken from the man, he built up and made into a woman, and he brought her to the man. Then Adam said, This creature is now bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of a man. And therefore... 
A man shall leave his father and his mother and shall become united and cleave to his wife and they shall become one flesh. I'm going to read that scripture again. Therefore, this is Genesis 2.24. Therefore, a man shall leave his father and his mother and shall become united and cleave to his wife and they shall become one flesh. This, y'all, was the institution of the family as we know it. Amen. The first institution of the family as we know it, because God brought forth that with the man and the woman. Amen. And yes, he did. And in, and in it, it was defined that they should become united and cleave to one another. Amen. And they became one flesh. All right. That's where we want to be. y'all. We want to have that understanding. So the significance of the relationship of family is that family is a union. A family is a union. It is a joining together by blood relationship, amen, by blood relationship, DNA, if you will, that, that, that causes everyone uh, uh, to have uh, uh, the same connect, to, to have that connecting factor. The con main connecting factor in that family relationship, as we know it, is uh, uh, the blood DNA, amen. God was the main connecting factor between uh, the original family. That's why God had me establish that first book, Unless God Builds the House. Amen. He built families. He absolutely built families. Amen. That's why he said that, that they, must, they must be united and cleave to one another. So now we want to go on, and, and we're in John 15, 12, and John uh, 15, 17, where you're going to find these words, and it's real simple as what Jesus Christ is saying. This is my commandment. That you love one another just as I love, have loved you. Now, now, this is his commandment to the people, amen, and to you and I. And also, I'm submitting to you, this is his commandment to uh, those of us that everybody that has a family, amen. Love you one another as Jesus has loved us, amen. And how did he love us, y'all? How did he love us? Well, John 3.16, for God so loved the world, he gave up his only begotten son. My, my, my. That's a sacrifice. He sacrificed himself for us. John 15, 13. No greater love does a man have than this than when he lay down his life for his friends. Further sacrifice. And then Romans 5, 8. For God commended his great love for us that while we were still sinners, Christ the Messiah, the anointed one, died for us. Not only did he sacrifice, but he, uh, he oh my God, he, had, <laughs> he extended grace toward us. God's unmerited favor toward us and mercy toward us. That's what God did for us, y'all. And he says that we are to love one another as I have loved you. That's what the word says. Love ye one another. This is my commandment that you love one another just as I have loved you. Amen. Now, now I know I can hear people say, but that was Jesus. He could do that. He was God. Well, I submit to you. That if you're in a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, if you say that you are born again, you can do exactly what Jesus did in this regard. And, and it's not that difficult for you to do. Why? Because you have the living God, God himself indwelling you. Amen. The Bible says that when you when you are born again, the Holy Spirit comes in and dwells you. And the Holy Spirit is the is the third person within the Trinity, y'all. He is the third person within the Trinity of the triune God of the Godhead. Let's go over that God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. And we all know and we all agree that that God is love. Well, if God is love, when he comes in and indwells us with God the Holy Spirit, guess what God does, y'all? He brings all of himself with us, and that would be his love. So how are we able to love one another as Jesus did? Utilizing the only love that could, that could be utilized to accomplish what Jesus did. His love, which is unconditional. Amen. Unconditional love, y'all. Unconditional love is what should be existing within our families. And Lord have mercy, I venture to tell you that it does not happen on the way that God had designed for it to happen. And not only does it not happen with us uh, naturally, it does not even happen in our churches, in the family of God. That's why we are such a dis we are such disarray. We are dysfunctional in the natural. We are dysfunctional in the spirit because we do not, and we're we're not, we're not understanding what God says when He says, "Love you one another as I have loved you." Plain and simple. I, it's not that difficult to understand, y'all. 
Only thing is, is that I understand is that when we're not trying to do and trying to adhere to what God is saying, then we get a deaf, we get a deaf ear to what the word is saying. And then in our eyes, all of a sudden we got dull vision or we don't want to read and see what the word of God is saying. But again, it's not that complex. It's not complex at all. It's very simple. And then he goes on to verse 17 just to help us out. This is what I command you, that you love one another. Amen. So let's go and see uh, what kind of love uh, we should be exuding towards one another.